Students often ask me, how can I remember when to use in and on in English? And why are prepositions so confusing? Today, I want to answer these questions for you. Welcome to English Coach 3Ts. I'm Tanya, and I have three ways of learning prepositions that I'm going to share with you. First, you may have heard me say that one of the best ways or the most effective way to learn prepositions is to learn them in context with a story. I have a whole playlist of stories that you can use to learn prepositions in this way naturally. So when you're finished with this video, go check out that playlist that I'll link below. But let's talk yeah. about the other two ways that a lot of people used to learn prepositions. One is to have a list of prepositions and to memorize those prepositions with the words that they belong to or the words they're used with. These phrases or groups of words with prepositions are called collocations. And today I have 10 collocations, 10 phrases I'm going to share with you and help you to remember them. So if learning in lists is your thing, in other words, if this is a way that you like to learn, here is a list of the first five collocations or prepositions in phrases. Take a minute to pause the video and write down these five phrases because we're going to work with these together. Why does it help to learn prepositions in phrases like these? Well, we have a basic difference between the way we use in and on. And if you need some help with that, because there's more to it than just that, I have a video that gives you a chart and some of the basics about these prepositions. I'll link that video below as well. But in and on don't follow those rules all of the time. So it's helpful to learn them in phrases, in groups of words, so that when you're ready to use these or to express this idea, you know the whole phrase. So today I'm going to share with you the five phrases you've already written down, and then I'll share five that use the preposition on. The first one on the list was in agreement. If I agree with you and you agree with me, then we are in agreement. Another example of this one is the entire team was in agreement about the proposal. I recommend that you write down these examples I'm giving you, but also write examples for yourself using situations, people, experiences that you can relate to because that will help you to remember them even more. The next one is in advance. This just means that we're going to do something or say something before something else. So for example, I will give you the information in advance. It means that I will give you the information before something else happens, before you need it, something like that. Let me give you another example so that you can change this example and make it more personal to you. I want to get my homework done in advance so that I don't have to think about it when it's due. The next phrase is in charge. Someone is in charge if they have authority, if they're responsible for what's happening. If they're managing a group of people, they're in charge. A very common question you'll hear using this phrase is, who is in charge? And the answer to that question in its full sentence would be something like, the man over there wearing the black coat is in charge today. Who's in charge at your work? or who's in charge in your house? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're a detail-oriented person, you're gonna like this last phrase using the word in. The phrase is in detail. When we want somebody to give us all the details in whatever they're doing or writing, we say, I'd like you to write a report in detail, meaning that you include all of the little important things. Another example where this phrase is often used is when we are sending an invoice. We could say something like, 
I received an invoice in detail, meaning that it not only gave me the basics of what I needed to pay for, but all of the specifics. So let's talk a little bit about why prepositions are so confusing. Well, one of the main reasons is that prepositions are different from language to language. So your native language may use prepositions in a completely different way than we use them in English. It doesn't really work to try and translate word for word. If learning prepositions has been confusing for you, a good way to get past that is to listen and watch more things where you understand about 90% of what they're saying. And then another very helpful thing is to practice prepositions in their correct form. You can do research online and find lots of lists and examples. And I've got five more prepositions, this time using the word on to help you with that. So here is the list of collocations using the preposition on. Again, pause the video and take a minute to write down this list so that you can follow along with me and use them for practicing. All of the prepositional collocations that I've included in this video are very common. And the first one on this list is to decide on. If you need to make a decision, it's possible that you're gonna wanna use this phrase. For example, if I'm trying to decide between two things, I might say, I have to decide on what I wanna wear to the party, this or that. Let me put this one in a question. You might ask someone, can you help me decide on the best way to get this done? If learning grammar and prepositions like this is helpful for you, it's really helpful for me if you share this video with someone you know who's learning English and wants to be fluent. This next preposition, to insist on, is useful if there's something you feel strongly about. For example, I must insist on the fact that you don't do that. And let me put this one in a question for you. Why do you always insist on things going your way? If you need to, pause the video so you can write down these examples. I find that this one is confusing for students. Do we put things on a list or in a list? Well, if you wrote it down, you know that we put things on a list. For example, Will you write down the things you want from the grocery store on a list? Or if you put it on a list, it makes it easier to remember. And the next one can also be very confusing, especially if you learned it incorrectly. The collocation is on a team. I know this seems confusing because it seems like we are in a team, but in reality, this one is on a team. You could say something like, I am on a team at work that's working on a project. There's a bonus one for you, working on a project. Let's put this one in a question. What team are you on? You notice that this one, the wording was changed. What team are you on? But that's because the collocation is the word team and on going together. And when we make it a question, it changes. If this is one of those that you learned incorrectly, I would recommend making even more examples and taking time to repeat those examples and to practice them again and again. The problem when we learn something wrong is that we've already made a pathway in our brain with the wrong word. It really isn't a terrible problem because we probably understand you even if you make a mistake. But if it's something that you'd like to correct, repetition will help you with that correction. And the last one on this list is on the beach. Who doesn't like to spend time on the beach? I'm actually a forest person myself, but given the chance, I love to spend time on the beach. How about you? Do you like to spend time on the beach? Remember that writing down the examples I gave you or copying what I say and saying it yourself will really help you to remember. And if you want to take it a step further, making examples that are personal to you is going to help you even more. A lot of people like to make lists like I gave you in the video and just memorize from the list. 
There's nothing wrong with doing it this way if this is something that works for you. But if this is something that either you're tired of or it just doesn't work, there are a couple of different ways that you can learn. When you're ready to take a class live with me on Zoom, be sure to look below for more information about our Women's Speak Better program and other classes that we offer. The link is in the description. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss another lesson like this. And if you're ready to learn some prepositions without doing these kinds of exercises, check out our playlist of the stories where you can learn them in context. Or I have a few other videos about collocations. Here's one of them, and I'll put the rest in a link below. See you there. Thank you.